Okay, hi there. Uh, Jeff here with another video looking at synoptic economics. This time I thought we'd look at the micro and macro consequences of rising interest rates. Central banks in many countries, including the Bank of England in the UK, have been raising their main policy interest rates in recent times. And this, of course, is a tightening or a deflationary monetary policy designed to bring about a period of disinflation, a fall in inflation, by mainly slowing down the, the growth of aggregate demand. But critically, of course, you might be asked a question on synoptic economics because higher interest rates have both micro and macro economic effects. In other words, uh, they affect uh, both at the level of the firm, the household, the industry, as well as the wider macro economy. And higher interest rates affect some consumers, some firms, some industries more than others. There's an asymmetry in terms of the impact. Some gain. Others lose out when interest rates are rising. We'll talk about that in this video. So 2022, 2023, as you can see from this chart, has seen the most significant interest rate changes since the 2008-2009 global financial crisis. As I record, at the end of May 2023, the UK central bank interest rate has gone up from 0.1% in November 2021 to 4.5%, 4.5%. In the summer of 2023, some people thinking it could go to 5% or above. What are some of the micro effects on individuals and households of rising interest rates? So you may be asked to think about the consequences at the level of the individual or the household. Well, one consequence could be the cost of borrowing. So individuals, households with loans, credit card debt, personal loans and mortgages, for example, will see higher borrowing costs. They'll have to repay more interest and that will cause a fall in their effective disposable income, leaving them with less money to spend on other goods and services. And of course, uh, it hits those with the large variable rate mortgages very hard, particularly if you've borrowed heavily at a variable rate of interest. On the other hand, savers may gain. So interest rates can benefit individuals and households who have savings accounts. And this can potentially boost their income, their disposable income. Although the real interest rate on savings may remain negative if the nominal interest rate, the money rate of interest, remains less than inflation. So keep in mind in the UK, what, the interest rate is 4.5%. If you can get that on your savings, but inflation remains stubbornly high at about 8%. What about some of the negative effects on interest rates going up, of interest rates going up for businesses? Well, one is the businesses with debt will have to pay more to service their borrowing. A lot of businesses, for example, issued corporate bonds during the pandemic to help survive during that recession. And that's going to increase their debt service costs, as well as increasing the cost of financing your investment. So it may well hit planned investment in machinery, technology, new buildings and so on. And that will then affect businesses that supply capital goods. Those people uh, building, manufacturing the tractors and the, the uh, cloud server infrastructure and so on and so forth. Supply chain industries might, might suffer. And critically, of course, there's a link between households and businesses. If interest rates go up, that's going to cause a fall in consumer spending on interest-sensitive products, new kitchens, for example, or new bathrooms, new cars. So spending also might be hit by a fall in property prices. Both are likely to cause a fall in business profits. Although, in evaluation, some industries, some businesses, some sectors are more insulated than others from higher interest rates, and some businesses and companies are better prepared to cope. So again, there's going to be an asymmetry in effect. There are some benefits to businesses at a micro level of higher interest rates, one of which is a macro consequence. So higher interest rates can cause an appreciation of the exchange rate, uh, perhaps caused by an inflow of hot money. Now, a stronger pound makes imports less expensive. So your components, your energy, your capital technology might be less expensive to buy. Good example there, farming. They might be able to buy imported feed and fertilizer from the European Union or from the United States at lower prices. I think about the consequences of that for costs and revenues. And ultimately, of course, higher interest rates in theory will help to bring about disinflation, which will, in, in, again, perhaps help to moderate wage and pay claims in the labor market particularly for businesses that use a lot of labour, hospitality and tourism, for example. So, uh, here we go. I'll just quickly remind you of the interest rate change because it is significant. 
since the Bank of England gained independence in 1997, what you're seeing here in the chart, the current tightening of monetary policy, is the most aggressive, the most significant in terms of pace and magnitude of, of interest rate increases that we've seen since, well, over for a quarter of a century. Now, what about some of the positive macro effects that's turned to macroeconomics of higher interest rates? Well, first of all, of course, you can argue it's going to help reduce inflation. So the idea is that you raise interest rates, you tighten monetary policy to slow down the growth of credit and spending and aggregate demand and help to bring down inflation. This will help to moderate pay demands and perhaps reduce the risk of we've seen in recent months of a wage price spiral and develop the line of reasoning that high inflation can be damaging to investment and economic growth in the long run. So higher interest rates helping to control inflation can be beneficial. That's certainly the view, for example, of the Chancellor who argues that uh, he would actually favour higher interest rates if it meant bringing down inflation, but at the cost of a short run recession. And there's also an argument about uh, savings in the banking system, that higher savings can act as a buffer against macroeconomic uncertainty. For well over a decade now, savers have been badly squeezed by a period of very low interest rates. And as a country, we're not really saving enough as a share of our GDP. So if people save more, that's going to increase the flow of deposits into the banking system which in theory could help create more liquidity to support the bank a rise in bank lending when, when, when the economy starts to pick up again. Higher interest rates certainly good for banks. I think banks make a profit, of course, by charging a higher rate on, on loans than they pay on savings deposits. So as interest rates have been going up, the difference between the two gets bigger. So bank profits are certainly rising. Let's hope they pay their taxes. But of course, there are negative macro effects of higher interest rates one of which is the uh, the impact of a higher exchange rate. Higher interest rates cause an inflow of hot money, causing the pound to appreciate. Of course, that can really hit export industries. It makes them less price competitive. And if exports take a hit, that might then lead to a slowdown in GDP, investment, jobs, as well as perhaps a worsening of the UK's net trade balance. And the other wider issue, of course, is the risk of recession. That if interest rates go up and continue to rise above 5%, for example, that might tip the UK economy back into recession. We had a recession in 2020. Are we going to get a recession in 2023-24? Fall in house prices, job losses from businesses with high debts, all of these could tip the economy into recession. And ultimately, a downturn in the economy affects investment, which makes it harder to control inflation and worsens government finances. The government have to borrow more just to pay the interest on existing debt. Now, when you get a question on synoptic effects of interest rates for microeconomic analysis, you can definitely use supply and demand analysis to look at the housing market or the market for new cars or whatever it is, so don't worry about that. You can also use cost and revenue curve analysis to show the possible impact on revenues and profits of businesses, as well as cost. Don't forget, of course, if the if interest rates go up and the pound rises, some costs for businesses go down. Can you show that in a cost and revenue curve diagram? And when you're building your macroeconomic points, impact on growth, inflation, don't forget, just go back to ADAS curves. They are so useful to show the possible impact of higher interest rates, for example, on inflation and economic growth. So don't forget to use those diagrams to build your analysis and then it makes it easier to evaluate. There we go. Synoptic video on higher interest rates. Very topical at the moment. If you found it useful, would love it if you press the like button. That'd be so, uh, so helpful to us. It helps us find other people on YouTube. But for now, thank you for joining in. Take care. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay curious. And I hope see you sometime soon.